From the dawn of civilization, humanity has yearned for peace. Yet paradoxically, our history is a tapestry woven with conflict, a relentless dance between the desire for tranquility and the stark reality of threat. In an age where global tensions simmer beneath the surface, where the blink of an eye can determine the fate of nations, the very definition of security is being rewritten. The old rules no longer apply. The vast distances that once offered protection have shrunk to mere minutes, sometimes seconds, by the relentless march of technology. This isn't just about faster planes or more powerful bombs. It's about a fundamental shift in how threats emerge and how nations must respond. The rise of sophisticated cyber warfare, the proliferation of advanced conventional weaponry, and the increasing speed of global communication have compressed decision-making timelines to an unprecedented degree. And at the heart of this redefinition, pushing the boundaries of what was once thought possible, lies a silent, swift guardian, a technological marvel designed not for widespread destruction, but for unparalleled deterrence, the conventional prop strike hypersonic missile. Imagine a world where a threat emerges with terrifying speed, a rogue actor, perhaps a non-state entity acquiring advanced capabilities, or a sudden escalation between rival powers, demanding an immediate, decisive response. Consider a critical target, such as a mobile missile launcher being prepared for launch, a clandestine command center orchestrating an attack, or a hidden facility developing weapons of mass destruction. In such a scenario, traditional responses, measured in hours or even days, become obsolete. The deployment of aircraft carriers, the repositioning of ground forces, or the launch of conventional cruise missiles, while powerful, simply cannot match the velocity of the emerging threat. The window of opportunity slams shut before the first fighter jet can even leave the runway, before a naval vessel can reach its firing position. This is the crucible from which the concept of conventional prompt strike was forged. A desperate need for a capability that could respond with overwhelming speed and precision anywhere on the planet, without resorting to the catastrophic implications of nuclear weapons. For decades, the ultimate deterrent was the nuclear triad, a terrifying balance of power that promised mutually assured destruction. This doctrine, while preventing large-scale global conflicts, left a significant gap in the spectrum of response. What if the threat wasn't existential? Not a direct attack on a nation's homeland that would warrant a nuclear counter-strike, yet still demanded an immediate, decisive response. What if the target was a mobile missile launcher, a command center, or a clandestine facility, and time was the most critical factor, where even a few minutes could mean the difference between success and catastrophic failure? This was the strategic void that the conventional prompt strike or CPS, was designed to fill. It's not about obliterating cities. It's about surgical precision delivered with a speed that defies comprehension, offering a non-nuclear option for time-sensitive, high-value targets, thereby enhancing crisis stability and deterring aggression below the nuclear threshold. The journey to create such a weapon was not merely an engineering challenge. It was a battle against the very laws of physics, a relentless pursuit of the seemingly impossible. Imagine the minds gathered in secure facilities, the quiet hum of supercomputers running billions of calculations per second, the endless simulations running through the night, pushing the boundaries of computational fluid dynamics. These were the modern-day alchemists, not seeking gold, but seeking to harness unimaginable speed and control. They grappled with temperatures that could melt steel, reaching thousands of degrees Fahrenheit due to extreme air friction. They contended with aerodynamic forces that could tear apart any conventional aircraft, forces that demanded entirely new designs and material compositions. They pushed the boundaries of material science, seeking exotic alloys and advanced ceramics that could withstand the inferno of atmospheric re-entry at Mach 5, Mach 10, or even higher, while maintaining structural integrity and precise control. The very air around the vehicle at these speeds transforms into a superheated plasma, creating communication blackouts and further complicating guidance systems. The engineers, the scientists, the strategists, they poured their lives into this endeavor. 
Their actions spoke volumes. The discarded coffee cups piling up on desks, the faint glow of monitors illuminating tired faces, the sudden bursts of excited chatter when a simulation finally yielded a promising result. A breakthrough in thermal management or a new aerodynamic profile. This wasn't just a job, it was a mission driven by the profound weight of national security and the desire to protect. They knew the paradox of their work, building a weapon so powerful, so fast, that its very existence might prevent it from ever being used. The emotional truth lay in that hope, the hope that their creation would stand as a silent sentinel. A deterrence so formidable that no adversary would dare to test its resolve, ensuring peace through strength. The conflict wasn't just technical, it was also geopolitical. As one nation pursued this capability, others inevitably followed, recognizing the profound strategic implications. The hypersonic arms race began. A silent, high-stakes competition played out in laboratories, wind tunnels, and test ranges across the globe. Nations like the United States, Russia, and China have been at the forefront of this technological sprint, each seeking to gain a decisive advantage. Each successful test by one nation spurred renewed efforts and accelerated research in another, creating a dynamic feedback loop of innovation and counter-innovation. The stakes were immense, strategic advantage in a rapidly evolving global landscape, the very nature of future warfare, and the delicate balance of global stability. This race isn't just about building faster missiles, it's about developing the sensors, the command and control systems, and the defensive capabilities to counter them, creating a complex and ever-shifting strategic environment. The conventional prompt strike missile is a marvel of modern engineering, fundamentally different from its predecessors. Unlike traditional ballistic missiles that follow a predictable parabolic arc, making them relatively easier to track and intercept once their trajectory is known, a hypersonic glide vehicle, the core of CPS, operates on an entirely different principle. It is launched to a high altitude by a booster rocket, much like a conventional missile. However, instead of continuing on a ballistic path into space, it detaches from the booster and re-enters the upper atmosphere, where it then glides at incredible speeds, often exceeding Mach 5, or five times the speed of sound, and potentially reaching Mach 20 or even higher. Crucially, this glide vehicle is not merely fast, it is also highly maneuverable. It can perform unpredictable evasive actions, changing direction, altitude, and speed mid-flight. This combination of extreme velocity and erratic flight path makes it incredibly difficult to detect, track, and intercept with existing missile defense systems, which are primarily designed to engage targets following more predictable trajectories. It's not just fast, it's elusive. It's a blur on the horizon, a whisper of wind, before its impact is felt, leaving adversaries with minimal reaction time. The propulsion systems alone are a testament to human ingenuity and relentless scientific pursuit. While the initial boost comes from conventional rocket motors, the sustained hypersonic flight relies on advanced air-breathing engines like ramjets and scramjets. These engines operate by compressing incoming air through the vehicle's forward motion, rather than using rotating compressors like jet engines, allowing them to function efficiently at extreme speeds. A ramjet compresses air subsonically, while a scramjet or supersonic combustion ramjet compresses and combusts air supersonically, pushing the boundaries of aerospace engineering. The guidance systems, capable of maintaining pinpoint accuracy at speeds that would make a bullet seem sluggish, are a symphony of cutting-edge sensors, sophisticated algorithms, and real-time adjustments. These systems integrate advanced inertial navigation units, satellite-based positioning, and potentially even terrain-following radar, constantly calculating and recalculating the optimal flight path. Every millisecond counts, Every calculation must be flawless, accounting for atmospheric conditions, target movement, and evasive maneuvers. The margin for error is non-existent, demanding unprecedented levels of precision and reliability from every component. Then came the moment of truth, the first full-scale tests. 
These weren't just technical exercises. They were profound demonstrations of intent, declarations of capability to the world. Imagine the tension in the control rooms, the hushed anticipation as the countdown reached zero, the air thick with years of effort and expectation, the roar of the launch, a thunderous symphony of power, the streak of fire against the sky, and then the almost unbelievable speed as the vehicle disappeared from sight, only to reappear on distant radars, a faint but unmistakable blip, hurtling towards its designated target. The data streamed back in real time, velocity, altitude, trajectory, thermal signatures. The impact, precise and devastating, confirmed what years of tireless work had promised. A new era of warfare, or perhaps a new era of deterrence, had dawned, reshaping strategic calculations across the globe. The resolution, however, is not a definitive end, but rather an ongoing state of uneasy peace and continuous strategic adaptation. The conventional prompt strike missile now exists. It is a tool of immense power, a testament to human innovation, and a stark reminder of the ever-present need for vigilance in a volatile world. Its purpose is clear, to hold any high-value, time-sensitive target at risk, anywhere in the world, with conventional force, thereby deterring aggression and preventing escalation. These targets could range from mobile intercontinental ballistic missile launchers to anti-access and area denial systems that threaten naval fleets to critical command and control nodes of an adversary. It is designed to be a rapid, non-nuclear option, a scalpel rather than a sledgehammer, capable of delivering a decisive blow without crossing the nuclear threshold. It is a scalpel that moves at speeds previously confined to science fiction, offering a credible response where traditional forces might be too slow or too escalatory. But with such power comes profound responsibility and a host of complex, unresolved questions. Does it truly enhance stability by providing a non-nuclear deterrent, or does it accelerate an arms race, pushing nations to develop ever faster and more elusive weapons? Does it lower the threshold for conflict by offering a cleaner strike option, making the use of force seem less catastrophic? Or does its overwhelming speed and precision make adversaries think twice before acting, thereby preventing conflict? These are the debates that continue in strategic circles, in the halls of power, and in the quiet reflections of those who understand the true weight of such technology. The development of CPS forces a re-evaluation of international norms, arms control treaties, and the very concept of crisis stability in a multipolar world. The emotional truth of the conventional prompt strike missile lies not in its metallic shell or its incredible speed, but in the human hopes and fears it embodies. It represents our collective desire for security in an unpredictable world, our relentless pursuit of technological solutions to complex problems, and the enduring paradox of building instruments of war in the pursuit of peace. It stands as a silent guardian, a testament to human ingenuity, and a constant reminder that the future of global stability rests not just on the capabilities we develop, but on the wisdom with which we choose to wield them. The race for speed continues, a relentless pursuit of technological supremacy. But the ultimate race, the one that truly matters, is the race for lasting peace, a race that demands not just innovation, but profound ethical consideration and international cooperation.